Welcome back to the Who's and Yanks. We talk everything Canada soccer and U.S. soccer. Tonight we'll be recapping the 2021 CONCACAF Gold Cup quarterfinal match between the U.S. M&T versus Jamaica. So the Yanks versus the Reggae Boys in this one. And in this one, the Yanks would take a very, a near, very narrowly 1-0 win over the Reggae Boys as this one came down to the last minute. It was a truly just nail-biter. But let's get right into it. USA comes out with a 4-3-3. And a uh, in really interesting formation as we have Matt Turner in the starting net. And then we have Shaq Moore, James Sands, uh, Anthony Robinson, and Sam Bynes as your back line for the United States. And then in your three in the middle, we have John Luca Busio, Kellen Acosta, and Sebastian Legette. And then finally, your three up top, you have Paul Ariola, Daryl DK, and Matthew Hoppy. And without further ado, we go into the game recap where the first minute, just like the Canada... Costa Rica games, a team comes out swinging, but this time it's Jamaica coming out swinging. Immediately, Jamaica comes out swinging as there's a mistake in the back from the USA. Jamaica pounces on it, but has a shot. It's saved, but it's offside anyway. So, but already, even though it's offside, it's an early warning shot for the Yanks. And so, here we go. 16th minute, an outstanding ball comes in for Shaq Moore, but he can't get there in time to do anything with it. Play on. 19th minute, Junior Flemings comes in for Jamaica. Shoots, but it goes past the post. Jamaica knocking on the door. 22nd minute, Matthew Hoppy has a great strike, but it's also a huge save from Andre Blake, the Philadelphia Union MLS standout keeper. Brilliant save from him. He's going to come up big for Jamaica all game long. 24th minute, two Jamaica players go down, injured. Um, so therefore, O'Neill Fisher comes in as one of, one of the Jamaican players, but I think the other one stays out there. 35th minute, Daryl DK uses his speed and tries to get a shot off, but well defended by a Jamaican defender as he tracks back well to just deny DK from even having a shot. And so, let me go to 39th minute where Junior Flemings has a strike, but Matt Turner comes up with a huge save. Both keepers are standing on their head to scan right now. Both Andre Blake and Matt Turner. It's a battle of the goalkeepers right now. Who's going to free the first to crack? And so, let's see who it is. But... 42nd minute, Jamaica already nearly filling themselves as there's a wide open net, but Bobby Reed, ah, this one was, he had a, he had it for Jamaica, he had it, but he just, it's a weak shot as he just, I don't know what he was trying to do with it, he probably couldn't make up his mind, the shooter pass right there on the spot, but it's a weak shot, Matt Turner says, thank you very much, easy save as man, but Costa Rica, I mean, Jamaica should have scored rare to make it 1-0 for the reggae boys, but they don't, and it's still nil-nil. 45th minute, Kellen Acosta tries to strike a volley from distance, but it's uh, just a whisker over the bar. And then it's halftime. USA does dominate the possession, but they can't really do anything with it, let's be honest here. Jamaica looks, just looks more deadly with the ball when they get it. It was one of those games where one mistake for the USA could cost them, but uh, the reggae boys had more opportunities with the, when they had the ball and more lethal opportunities too. And uh, USA also looked very poor on set pieces. I mean, the, the chan all the chances they had on set pieces were squandered and just really, really upsetting from them. And, but then when the second half continues, there's a mistake in the back this time from Jamaica as it leads to Sebastian Legit pouncing on it, but he gets a shot off, but it's deflected wide with a corner kick as Jamaica's able to track back and defend this one. And then we have in the 47th minute, Daryl DK takes a touch, lays off to Matthew Hoppy. He shoots, but it's once again saved by Andre Blake on his head. 50th minute, Bobby Reed has a near shot near the post, but Matt Turner sees it all the way, and it's a save for him. 56th minute, Jamaica has a breakaway, and it's two on two with Matt Turner, but Anthony Robinson tracks all the way back and saves the day for the Yanks. This was a, that, that could have been a real problem there for the USA, but. Thanks to Anthony Robinson, it's still nil-nil. 66 minute, Zardes has a strike, but it's saved once again. My guess who? That's right. He said Andre Blake. You're correct. And then we go to the 75th minute where Christian Rodon tries to shoot from distance, but what was this? I mean, he just whiffs on it. And it just, ah, I didn't know what I saw when I saw it live. I just, I just couldn't help but just laugh at this one because I don't know what he was trying to do here. He clearly made poor contact with the ball, but poor, missed chance, game goes on. But in the 83rd minute, there's a breakthrough for the USA as they send the ball over the top of the box to Matthew Hoppy, and he heads it in. 
finally the Yanks break through. It is 1-0 Yanks with the late goal. And it also turns out to be his final action of the night as he's pulled for Nicholas John Keeney, by the way, which is his birthday. So, unfortunately, Nicholas John Keeney wouldn't score a goal for his birthday, but he would have a good showing. And in the second minute of 90th minute stop his time, there's a corner kick that comes in. Andre Blake tries to head it in, but collides in the air. Looks like a head collision with Anthony Robinson. And now we have, they both collapse on the ground, but they, it's um, really, just really bad. It just looked really scary on TV. And both had head injuries, so, you know, major concussion or protocols and anything like that. Major concern for both teams. Uh, most notably, the U.S. Andre Blade came out with uh, some more physical damage, but um, I don't know how the mental or inside the headaches or stuff of it are. But despite the head injuries, the match ends. The USA hangs on and will advance to the semifinals to play Qatar in Austin, Texas at the brand new openly Q2 stadium. What a game. This was a nail biter, as I said. We go to the stats as. USA outshoots Jamaica 11 to 9. Five of the shots, both teams have five shots on target. 68 possession for the United States to 32% possession for Jamaica. 579 passes completed to USA to 283 for Jamaica. 84% pass accuracy to Jamaica's 62% pass accuracy. 10 fouls at 13 fouls. No yellow cards for the United States. Well job being disciplined for the Yanks. Three yellow cards for Costa I mean for Jamaica. Um, no red cards, no offside for the United States, but four for Jamaica and seven corners apiece. Just really good game here for the Yanks. As I said, another gutsy, gritty, CONCACAF win. As we, we knew this wasn't going to be easy. We knew this was going to be another just sit back, be patient, in hopes that something comes. We knew it was going to be another one of those games, so it was going to be sloppy. It was going to be just ugly, but hey. The Yanks got the job done just like they did against Canada, Haiti, and even um, Martinique. They got the job done. They're still rolling in this tournament. Now they've got to get their minds ready for Qatar, a, a guest tournament, a guest, a guest team in this tournament. So we'll see how they do against Qatar in Q2 in Austin, Texas. But what I liked about this game too the most is that it gave this young Yanks side experience and exposure to playing a physical football, which is what Jamaica plays. You know, in CONCACAF, you got to get used to just getting bodied and just getting bullied around sometimes, especially if you're going against older, experienced players. So these young U.S. team, which average age is under 23 years old, it's just, it's good for them. And so, it's just at some point, if you're going to have more players into the mix for uh, CONCACAF World Cup qualifying, you're going to have to Make sure they what they know what they can endure and what they're gonna have to endure during Concacaf qualifying. As Concacaf can be a tough place or a physical place for if you're not prepared. But um, great game, physical game, really exposed um, what fo what the USA would play against Jamaica and what physical football is like. But one thing that does concern me the most is that another quiet game for Daryl DK. Um, Daryl DK didn't give. He has the least touches on the ball for this team, I think, is what the one of the stats. But he was just quiet. He was just quiet all game. I mean, he didn't have any chance, any real chance of scoring. Just very few. But on the other hand, um, Matt Turner had a great game, such as Andre Blake for Jamaica. But Daryl DK, for me, is a major concern. So he's not getting enough touches on the ball. So for your United States, what do you got to do? You change for Would you drop someone? Do you need a cam? Uh, see a, a, a center attacking mid position, you know, what do you need? How are we going to get DK more active in the game? Because right now he is quiet. He's just on his own island. I mean, he's not really part of anything. So you got to bring him back if you're the United States, especially if he's supposed to be your standout player of the tournament. So yeah. if I'm Greg Berhalter, I'll be thinking on ways we can get DK involved in the next game against Qatar. Because you're going to need him. So I think this Qatar team is really good from what I saw. But... Outstanding, as I said, for Matt Turner and Andre Blake. Tough match from Andre Blake, though. He fought his hardest to keep his team in it, but unfortunately, at the end of the day, uh, Matt Turner did come up huge, but Andre Blake, the Jamaica cracked, and Andre Blake did get the worst of it, and he is eliminated, but he'll be back at Philadelphia Union. But the Yanks will go on to play Qatar. But for me, 
the hero of the match, the brightest woman of the match is Matthew Hoppy. He gets the game winner. He out jumps one of the Jamaican players and heads it in the net. Beautiful ball. And it's also his first international goal. And I'm thinking, what a way to score your first international goal. A game winner to send your team to the semifinals of the 2021 CONCACAF Gold Cup against a tough opponent. I mean, that's brilliant. You can match a better goal than that for Matthew Hoppy. Plays the soccer in Bundesliga. And she's, from what I saw, he's. He's been I mean, one of the best players of the team, if not the best player on the team from what I saw. But, you know, as I said, if they get, if we can get Giro DK going alongside with Matthew Hoppy, if we can get those two going, I think the USA offense could be deadly, with this, at least with this squad. But we got to find a way to get Giro DK back in the game. But um, that pretty much does it with it. Another nail-biter for the USMNT. The Yanks pulled this one out over the Reggae Boys. One nil at the death, and in Dallas, Texas. But they'll go down to play in Austin, Texas, in Qatar, in Q2 Stadium, home home of Austin SC and MLS. But if you like this video, make sure you like, share, subscribe, tell all your friends that this one was a nail biter.